So now that the show is over, you may still have the t-shirt. You may actually have some video clips and a couple pictures of here and there. But everything will be hidden away on your phone or in the back of a drawer until the next special concert comes up. We're going to show you something that you can do with these guys. I'm going to show you how to make the greatest piece of concert memorabilia anyone could ever have. So the first thing you're going to do is you want to do an image search for the concert you've either been to or are going to. In our case it was Bob Seger in Bristow, Virginia, so... Then you go to images. And bam, it's right there. This is the part that actually makes it a little personalized. As you can see there's lots of images to choose from. And a lot of these are promotional images from the concert itself. As you can see, Jiffy Lube Live, Saturday the 25th of May. I've gone over this with other people and from what I understand being that they're promotional items, they're not copyrighted, have at it. When you find the image that you like, of course, you just save it to a file. And as you can see, we have a few here. After we have it saved, as you can see, they're not necessarily in poster shape. So we dump it into our photo editor, change it to the shape and size we want, because they actually took that photo from that. By the time it's all done, we have that. Just two things real quick. When you edit your own photo, one, our size is going to be a whole lot smaller than the average concert poster. The second thing is, is most printers are going to want like a 300 dpi, so just keep that in mind. The larger you go, they may pixelate out just a tad bit, but overall, I mean, if you look at a Jumbotron up close, all you're going to see is individual lights. So, it all depends on how far away, how big, you know, and you just have to keep that in mind. If it does pixelate out just a tiny bit, it's really not going to matter at all. You'll never see it when it's actually the full poster. So when you're done editing your size, save your file and then come on over to Office Depot or your printer of choice. In our case it's real easy. They have a poster section and everything. We just pick a standard print of 16 by 20. They're not really cheap as you can see. They're $12.99 a piece. But the next one I believe is only like a dollar and you can have like a bunch of them if you want to. And then from there, you can just run through and you can upload your own design. And of course, you know, there you go. And just drag and drop. Once you're done dragging and dropping your picture, you can go down here to picture quality. Now, they recommend 55 pound bond paper, and that's what we use. And we've been very satisfied with it. It's a nice stiff board, it's much thicker than just average concert poster material. So once you hit your review and purchase, all you got to do is wait for Office Depot to deliver. Now while you're waiting for your Office Depot order or your printer of choice to show up, you're going to have to make a couple errands or you can pay the delivery charges but they're they're crazy. First thing we did is we went to Michaels and got a photo mat. Now it's pretty large it's a 24 by 36 I believe oversized it runs about twelve dollars now the shipping cost will cost you about fourteen dollars so you're better off actually going there and picking it up we personally chose black for this project but you can go on their websites and see that they have uh, in these basic colors probably five or six different colors from white to red to blue the next thing we use are these mainstay picture frames from Walmart. As you can see we use a 22 by 28 overall. They are about $14 a piece also and hold up real well. Just be aware though it's not glass. It's poly it's for a weight factor. A piece of glass that big in a plastic frame is illegal nowadays. Surprisingly, after only four days, our poster has already arrived. It came rolled up in this little tube here. 
we laid it out overnight to let it flatten out. For those of us who are not comfortable with doing our own framing, at this point you're probably just going to want to jump to the end and take a picture of the final result and run down to the frame shop and have them do you off now that you have your poster. First thing we like to do, since these frames, like all frames, tend to want to change size over the years. I mean, it's ever so slightly, but they do. We're going to take the actual backer out of one of the frames and just give us a slight reveal so not to make it any bigger. Something I didn't mention real quick, always look over your mat. Trust me, I've already, I glanced it over real fast, in the, it, but to point this out, you know, you don't want to have a dented corner in this corner, even though you have one, and that one's kind of a little bit. So, I, to, to avoid that, you always want to look your mat over first and use the best part of it, because you're not you're pretty much just going to throw the rest away. This part really is going to be specifically for the 16x20 poster that we purchased. We have reveals on all sides. We already have our measurements figured out since we've done a few of these. And for those who want to make an exact copy, we come in three and a quarter inches. And the reason we do a quarter extra even though the mat's going to work out to be even on both sides is we actually want the poster to overlap the inside of this by about a quarter inch on all sides. Our outside lines are going to be 18 and 3 quarters and of course this is already established with the backer board that the overall size is going to be 22 inches. Now we're going to mark this up here on this side and on that side Another hint also is not to use pencil lines on areas that are going to be displayed. You can erase them, but they tend to rough up the mat a little bit, so you always want to make sure your lines are in further than what you're actually going to cut out. Now the measurements when it comes to the height is going to be from zero, and we're going to come up four and a quarter. And then our overall height is going to be 28 inches so we're basically going to come back four and a quarter from it which is 23 and three quarters and we're going to mark there down on both sides and then we're going to have to cut out the center now I know a lot of folks would just cut the out the overall size and throw old Bob on there and say yep that's a done deal well the sides have a slight white color and it actually gives the whole thing depth and even as cheap as this is it makes it look like a million bucks so it's really worth doing it is a fourteen dollar poster for god's sakes show it some dignity As you can see here, we made sure not to take any of our pencil lines out into our border area. As I said, you can remove them, but after rubbing on it, you tend to screw the face up a little bit. Of course, that's our outside line. Now you're going to have to find yourself a, some sort of a metal straight edge. Don't cut against wood. You'll cut into it, you and everything else. We got ourselves a piece of flat metal here from my flooring years. And brand new blade. Brand new. And you're going to want to draw out of the corner. You don't want to draw into the corner until very, very end if you need to. So we're just going to hit our point. Drive in. This stuff is extremely soft. And don't panic if you don't go all the way through on the first cut. The main thing you want to do and stay within your lines and cut the face.
We always like to go around our edges that we cut with a 120 sandpaper. I mean, the material's soft and just a little bit like that will take off anything that's little burrs are hanging or anything or it's kind of like a little uneven. It makes it nice and smooth and crisp. Of course, you have to use very light pressure. You're just trying to knock the nubs off, nothing more. Then we like to flip it over and make sure all the nubs are off the back because if you don't, wherever you put the poster at, it'll stick out and it'll look kind of untidy. Now that we have our matte frame all sanded up, we're going to make sure it still fits properly in our frame. And also notice that we haven't taken the paper out of the frame itself yet. And it's because of the poly glass that they use. Once you remove this paper, the static electricity goes off like a nightmare. And you don't want to be around anything that's fibrous because it will pick up stuff no matter what. You can almost feel the energy come off of it. It's so, so static when you remove that paper. So we'll get everything created, then we'll take it to a hard surface and probably wipe it down so it's kind of wet around it and actually then set this everything right in it so that way it nothing ends up between us and the glass. So that's a good fit. Okay, now I'm going to take our frame, flip it over. I'm going to put a couple guide marks on here of where I want the poster to square up at. Then I'm going to take the insert I cut out, I actually cut off just a little bit more than what was actually cut out, lay it in the center. The reason I do that is so when we bring old Bob in here, we lay him on top of our cutout, it doesn't end up being concaved in. You also don't want to stretch the frame side to side and then because it just causes ripples inside the actual picture frame itself. And of course we're going to pull out our trusty scotch tape. We're going to put a couple pieces in place. What I like the temporary kind of like make sure you fold over one and get our marks met, made up. Just want to make sure everything's square. Nothing got covered. We can always shift it a little bit this way, that way if we need to. I'm sure a few of you have already noticed that the top border and bottom border is wider than the actual sides border. And there's a reason for that, of course, and that's our next step. You take your ticket stubs and you fan them out. We make sure we can actually see that we had all our seats here, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then you put a little scotch tape on the back of them and tape them together. So, you know, they don't want to flop around. Next step is, as you measure your center of your frame here, which is 11 inches for us and we're just going to put a little dot right there and then we take our tickets and you measure from furthest width to furthest width because if you don't you'll say oh that's the center of the ticket and you'll stick it right there and it'll look like they all fan off to one side or the other so ours is right about here so that's good I'll just put that little tiny dot there and when right about here and you want to put them up closer to the top of the frame because you have to keep in mind that the bottom is going to be covered up by the actual picture frame itself now how you attach these is up to you I tend to use just a little scotch tape folded over on two sides it stays and by the time it's actually sandwiched between the frame and the 
and the mat board they never move so and with a good press they'll be there long enough Ta -da. so like we said before we ever take the paper out we we'll definitely have it on a nice dry surface that's just been wiped down so it doesn't have any static and you want to take the paper out almost hear it static pulling away. Just take that off. Give little Bob a good second shake here. And in he goes. Without touching the glass or a plastic or whatever you want to call it. And then just for make things a little tighter. Turn our paper around so the white side is showing out. Not that you're going to be able to see through it anyway because of that 55 pound paper. And our back goes. nicest piece of concert memorabilia you can ever pick up. It's got your date, it's got your tickets, it's got the show tour. It's like the old school um, concert posters they used to put on billboards. This is where I got the idea from years ago. I've been doing this for a lot of years. Don't be afraid to look at old tours that you've seen in the past. We did this one about 10 years ago. It's from a tour from 1982. If you remember the time you saw them and approximately the date, start doing an internet search. There is so much information out there, it's unbelievable. So as you see, it's really not that difficult. It just takes a little time and a little legwork. And a couple bucks, of course. But to buy this retail, it'd be probably twice the money you have invested. To buy it retail, personalized it's priceless every time you walk past it you'll be able to remember that show and prove that you were there so if you like this video please hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel we'd really appreciate that and thanks for watching we'll see you around